That's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the MFJ 4275MV 75 amp switching power supply. We'll get to it right after this. Okay, the items that come in the box, you get the power cord, owner's manual, you get a set of ring connectors, as well as connectors for power pole. And you get, obviously, the switching power supply itself. Some of the features of the 4275 are that it runs at 75 amps peak, 70 amps continuous. It's compatible with the ALS 500 solid state mobile amplifier. Has MFJ's hash squash filtering system. It's designed to protect against short circuits, overload, and over temperature. It's adjustable from four volts DC to 16 volts DC. Has battery charging terminals on the back. It measures nine and three quarter by five and a half by nine and a half inches and weighs ten and a half pounds. And at the time of filming, it's going for $349.95. On the front you have the power light, warning light, voltage meter, current meter, voltage adjust. You have the cigarette lighter and the quick connect terminals. Both of these are 10 amp max. And some power poles are 35 amp max. You have these two binding posts, which is 40 amp max, and then you have five-way binding posts, which is the 75 amp max. Now there's a voltage adjustment from four volts DC to 16 volts DC using this knob right here. It has a detent for 13.8. You have two meters, a volt and an amp. As you can see, they are lit. Right now we're at four. You just turn that up until you get to that detent and you're at 13.8. Again, you can go all the way up to 16. Here on the back side, you have your plug-in for the power, on-off switch, dual fans, and the battery charger. Now, if you want to charge a battery with the battery charger on the MFJ4275, per the manual, it says the battery to be charged must be connected to the charger output binding posts on the back of the unit. Charging output is set to 13.8 volts DC, maximum charging current is 20 amps for 20 seconds and 5 amps continuous. When the battery reaches its capacity, circuit will reduce charging current to a trickle charge of 30 milliamps. I'm going to show you the inside of this real quick. You have four capacitors out here. I believe they're 1000 microfarad. A very large heat sink and there's another one on the other side. Again, the other heat sink. Some smaller capacitors down here. There's some more on the back side here behind these positive and negative wires. And here's a view from the top. Got the large 1000 microfarad capacitors on this side, the two heat sinks, you have your fans. This is the back side of the cigarette lighter, and you can see more capacitors down here on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to start turning on each radio one at a time, beginning with the FTM 300, and you'll watch as the amps start to increase. Then the FT2980, the ICOM ID5100, we go to the IC7300, FT991 Alpha, and then the FTDX101D. See if we can make a contact. Right now, unfortunately, I only have a two meter 440 antenna set up. WJ6F, testing. And I'm gonna power them down, starting with the two meter 440 radios. And you should see the needle start going back down to the left. Under the ID5100, FT991 Alpha, IC7300, and then the last one, the FTDX101 Delta which seems to be the biggest power hog. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, check out one of these other videos. And thanks again for watching.